need some help. You believe that? I believe you. But you won't tell me about yourself. There's nothing about me worth telling. Especially to a cop? To anybody. Where'd you ever learn to stand like that? In the backyard of a little town in southern Illinois when I was two years old. All right, Purdue. Two witnesses put you at the scene. You were running along a road towards some parked car. I've got to book you. You want a lawyer? No, sir. A public defender? Is there any different? Okay. Book him. Does that mean he's guilty? No, no, not at all. Just indicates he needs a lawyer. He'll be found guilty when a good lawyer can't convince a jury to the contrary. By the way, who sent you to us? I didn't look you up in the yellow pages. I know that you're good. And expensive. We try to live well. Well, gentlemen, don't let these clothes delude you. I'm fairly well healed. And I want him out on bail. Forgive my curiosity, but uh, how well healed are you? Two million. That about do it? I think that'll go a long way. Can you get him out? Well, it's possible. That is, if their case isn't too strong. It'll cost about 20,000. I'll pay it. Yes? Right, I'll take it to my office. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Well, there's 30. 10 for you. And there's plenty more. Just do everything you can for him. Use all the tricks of your slimy trade. I'm sorry I said that. I didn't mean it that way, really. I know how you meant it. Good. Well, what do we do now? What's next? I buy you a beer. I met him in Canada. He was ducking the draft up there, and I'd driven another draft dodger up there. And I met Jerry, and I fell in love with him. He's cool. He's very sweet, very easy to love. Thank you. Tell me about the, the dead boy, Peter Callender. Did you know him? Yeah, he was a skinhead, very uptight, very straight. Strangest cat there, really. Weird. Weird. How? Well, he talked to nobody but Cherry. Apparently, they had known each other from the same small town in Illinois. Jerry treated him like a long-lost brother. He gave him some bread and tried to get him to stick around. And how did uh, Calendar react to this? Like a zombie. Did you uh, talk to him much? Just once. I'm afraid it was like visiting the death house. I tried to make up conversation like, uh, how do you do? What's new? Straight talk like, uh, well, I asked him what he was going to do with his life. And what did he say to that? Nothing, he said. But I asked him why, and he gave me a good reason. He said it was because he was going to be killed. That's a pretty good reason, all right. And he said it like it wasn't going to be an accident, but like he was doomed and he couldn't escape it, like it would 
be. Murder? Yeah. It's like murder. What's a bribery for? A little harmless information with my affections. What's your boss got that I don't know? <laughs> you earn your fee, all right. Edna, you have a materialistic mind. Didn't you know the adversary system is in the pursuit of justice, not money? You must tell me about it sometime. Well, I'd like to. Boy didn't confess, did he? The boy didn't give us the time of day. Well, you're not giving me much either. And what do you expect for three lousy roses? Whatever you'd like to give, it's a good cause. You talked to him yet? No. Well, he's no hippie, so don't let the long hair fool you. He had it short once, in Vietnam, the Mekong Delta, where he got a bronze medal and an honorable discharge from the armed forces. Well, well. And by the way, I hate roses. What would you like? The money, Walt. I'm Walter Nichols, your lawyer. Who said so? Your girlfriend, Grace Young. Also, I got bail for you, so we won't have to talk here. No, we won't have to talk anyway. Just that I get claustrophobia in jail. I didn't know they gave bail for murder. If the case isn't airtight, they do. Maybe the judge thought you killed him in a fight, did you? I didn't kill him. That's all I'm going to say. So I don't know how you're going to prove I didn't. The prosecution has to prove you did, and I could hamper him in his efforts. I've been known to do that. How much was the bail? The bond cost $20,000. $20,000? Who would put up that much bread? Can't say. What do you mean you can't say? Let's put it this way, I won't say. But I will say this much, it wasn't your draft board. It wouldn't be what somebody has. It would be what somebody put up, wouldn't it? Let's say it's an act of faith. That's a lot of faith. Well, is it enough to get us out of this place? <laughs> Man, you don't have claustrophobia or any other fear. I got a feeling you're just thirsty. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, would you hand me my stash bag? I knew what you meant back at the jail. That shut-in fear. Every hour the walls got closer. You think I'm after 20 years or a lifetime. That's what I could get, huh? Well, you could even get the gas chamber if I don't figure something out. I can't do that without your help, can I? I didn't kill him. He was the best friend I ever had. I loved that guy. I grew up with him. Wherever he went, I went. Wherever I went, he went. Even Vietnam? Come on, man. You got fingerprints like everybody else. And the Army's got records. I know you have an honorable discharge and the Bronze Star. All I ask you was if he was there with you. That's all. Yeah, we were there. And that's all I have to say. 
I knew him. We were there. And I didn't kill him. You understand? Better give her back the bail money and put me back in that cell. I don't put people in jail. I keep them out. something. What for? So you look nicer in court. Harder to recognize. Don't make me jump that generation gap. I'm too old and too fat. Come on. I'll give you some thought. Thanks. For what? We haven't done anything for each other. For the beer. I find Gary Perdue. Right around the bend, man. What do you care how much money I've got or what I do with it? Is it your business? Far from it. Oh, are you thinking of going back to Canada like a phony draft dodger? You know, that was really wild. I just don't dig it. Do you? No. Don't just stand there like a lousy narc. Sit down. Why not? Hey, man, you play that thing? Not often. He doesn't want any help from anybody. I know. Not your brains or my money. What did he do, kill that boy? Ask him. Ask him? Swell and get an answer and smoke signals. Tell me something, was Jerry really in the army? They say so. Vietnam, no less. Perfect. Just perfect. And he's had me hiding out a draft evader. What are you, undercover for the CIA or something? Cool it. Just cool it. Now everybody keeps something. You kept something from me, and I kept something from you. Go drink some wine. Why don't you help yourself? Would you have a beer in there? Sure, come on. You want a glass? Uh, can be fine. What are you doing here? Uh, I get restless. Can't stand offices or crowds, bars. Thought I'd talk to him in his own quarters. Loosen him up a little bit. It won't help. I have to see 
he just said that everybody keeps something. I think he's keeping a whole lot. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Okay. Well, how do you like that? He split. I don't know, maybe I should have just left him in the slammer. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Well, I just can't talk to him. I can't communicate. Well, you can communicate without talking. What do you mean? Well, he has to sleep sometime. When he does, cut his hair. Cut some of it, at least. He's beginning to look like Judas Iscariot. Me and I can't beat that rap. You know, just enough to make him presentable in court. Hmm? You are the bartender at uh, the Hawk and the Dove. Yes, sir. Now, you were acquainted with uh, Peter Callender. As a customer. As a customer. And uh, also with the defendant, Jerry Perdue. As a customer. Would you say that they were friendly to each other? Well, I guess so. I'd say the defendant was the friendlier of the two. Uh, why would you say that? Well, he used to do all the talking. Calendar just uh, listened and stared into his booze. Of course, being quiet isn't necessarily unfriendly in my book. And they both came into your bar frequently. Who are those people? Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, say Peter's mother. I'd say dad. occasionally. Now. Would you say that either one of them ever uh, said anything to you that would indicate that they weren't friendly? Yeah. Yes, sir. Calendar did. When? The night before he was killed. Tell us exactly what he said. Well, they both come into the bar together and had a beer, played the jukebox, and then Jerry there, the defendant, suddenly got up and walked out as though they had beefed. I served him two fresh beers and... Uh, I asked, was he coming back? And Calendar said, no, he wasn't. And I said, was there any trouble or anything? And he kind of smiled a little and said, yeah, a little. He's going to kill me. Thank you. Now, think. Was it, he's going to kill me, or he kills me? You know what I mean? I know. Which? He's going to kill me, he said. Now, you could be mistaken about that, couldn't you? No, sir. Nice try. Uh, no redirect, Your Honor. The witness is excused. Hello. Anybody home? Here it comes. Well, hello. Violets. Yes, I recognize them. They're the only flowers I know, except uh, roses. And the only birds I know are robins and owls. <laughs> you look like an owl, Walt. I live like one. I, I, I don't wake up till dark. Well, I can dig that. You slept pretty good through that courtroom scene. Well, the DA has the best of me. You see, he has people who will testify for him in his case. I only have you. What do you want? I cut off all my hair, shaved off all my beard and mustache. I don't want any sugar on that. No. Did you put sugar on it? No, no, no. Why? Do you think it'd be LSD? <laughs> you know, today, when I was looking at Pete's mom and dad, it was just as if they were sitting on their front porch on Sunday, man, back home. I kept looking at her. I wanted to catch her eye. When I finally did, I swear she smiled at me. Just a little. It was like she didn't believe anything that was going on. When my folks died, I lived with them for a while. And she was... Just like my own mother. It's really nice. That old white house with lilac bushes. 
Back in Illinois, the violets really grow, too. Believe it. Yeah, they sure do. I know that for sure. When cockle shells turn silver bells, then will my love return to as soon as I could lift it. It was probably at the age of two, or in the crib like Hercules. She used to sing little songs to me. Remember this one, Jerry? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. Picking up pawpaws, put them in your pocket. Picking up pawpaws, put them in your pocket. Picking up pawpaws, put them in your pocket. Way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. What are you trying to make him do? Well, trust me, like me, talk to me. There's something that he has to tell somebody, but he can't. He wanted to tell Mrs. Callender, but he couldn't, even if it cost him his life. Man, it might cost him his life if he doesn't tell me. I can't do anything unless I know what he's hiding. Well, I think if anyone can do it, you can. Do you want to quit? If I did, would I bring you violets? Save him. Just save him, whatever it takes. Well, a miracle. You know, they happen to me from time to time. I am an old mystic from the river country. I believe in miracles. Now, you were uh, driving along slowly looking for an address. Yeah, 25 Pine Road. You have a friend living there? Chris Shoemaker, my wife's brother. I see. Well, what happened before you found it? Well, I was driving along, like I said, and looking for the turn off, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this kid running, this man. Well, naturally, I instinctively, I swerved the car, right? And the headlights sprayed along this ditch. And I saw a man lying there like he was dead. So I come out of the car and stare up the road, and I see him running towards a parked car. Let the record show that the witness is indicating the defendant, Jerry Perdue. How is he dressed? Can you tell me? I mean, I, I only ask because, frankly, I can't tell them apart. Hippies, I mean. Sometimes even the boys from the girls. It ain't easy. But I seen him. Well, how was he dressed? Well, he had a light coat on and, uh, you know, them tight pants. Shoes? Well, either bare feet or light color sneakers. You know how they all dress. Ah, you mean they all dress pretty much alike, don't they? Pretty much. So, they all look alike to you, isn't that what you're saying? Oh, no. Not their faces. I seen his face clear in the headlights. Well, how much of his face? All of it. All of it? 
But didn't he have a mustache? Yeah. And a beard? Yeah. And long hair? But that's still him. Right there. That's all. It's very groovy, man. Any uh, redirect, Mr. Phillips? Yes. I think we got it made. Mr. Greeley, you identified this uh, young man at a police lineup, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. And there were uh, half a dozen other men there lined up for you to see? Six or seven. So at the time that you identified this defendant, he had not yet shaved his mustache or his beard or cut his hair, had he? No, sir. No more questions? The witness is excused. You think we've got it made? You're wrong. Calling me a fool out of this star witness. No, he didn't. He just confused him. The jury might not like that. A smart lawyer confusing a simple, honest, middle-class old war veteran like him. Especially over a long-haired hippie like you. No, sir. Not even if I tell them that, that, that you're a war veteran. You know there's 27 million war veterans in this country? Talking about the live ones? That's right. There are five of them in that jury box that think they made the world safe for people like you and they're beginning to regret it. Some world, some safety. Cherry. Tell me the truth. If I knew it, I might have a chance. You talk to him. I've tried. Well, keep crying. Well, where are you going? I don't know. Well, I'll go with you. Idea. Not brilliant, maybe even a little desperate. It's the best I can do. and nobody answers. Something about yourself. I just have a little drink of that for me, son. And he fought for his country, etc. In Vietnam, etc. Got a medal, etc. What's he, etc.? Rhetoric. If the Congress of the United States is mixed up about a war, etc., half the people are picketing their consciences, what the devil happens to the poor PFC? Hmm? That's me. You tell me something better. He gets mixed up all right. He freaks out pretty good. Well, PFC, etc. Villages, 
And the people skitter about like little birds. Some kid, man, some 14-year-old kid, so terrified. He takes your fear away and you lower your rifle. Bam, he shoots you in the head. Who's the friend? Who's the enemy? Not like your war, you know? Different uniforms shot at each other. German was a Nazi. And what the devil is a VC? I mean, how do you... How, how do you tell him from a friendly peasant? I don't know. That's good. Neither do I. Pick a little. <laughs> Yeah. Had an old dog. His name was Blue. Bet you five dollars he's a good one, too. Saying, come on, Blue. You. Dug his grave with a silver spade. Lowered him down with a golden chain Saying, go on, Blue I'm a coming to Just beat in your outfit? Went all the way together. He was so cool. Then I leaned on him. I guess I always did, too. He, time we were dumb little kids shooting baskets or shooting rabbits. <sighs> he never liked to kill anything. He used to use a single shot twenty-two to shoot squirrels with. Want to give them the best of it. The odds are about fifty to one in their favor. Never used a shotgun. It was a good shot, man. He needed somebody to yell at him. Hey, Pete! Kill it! That squirrel's a damn commie. What happened to him? You're trying to brainwash me. Why would I do that? Walt, you're a crafty old cat. Uh, I'll drink to that. I'll also level with you. There's something more, something you never told anybody. Not one living soul. Something that his mother and father sitting there in that courtroom should never hear. The silence that you do at least 20 years for. 20 years? Yeah. Pete's doing forever. Half the dudes I knew out there are doing it. Slim, Verge. Terry, Joe, the Chicano. The Battle Boys. The Battle Brothers. They almost made it home. When does killing become murder? By law. What law? Self-defense. I think Pete wanted to be killed. Why? I don't know. It's weird, man. But I think he wanted me to kill him. Punish him for something you knew about? Something that happened out there? Come on, soldier, tell it. Get it out of your system. You don't want to carry it around like Pete did and go crazy? Now, he did something that he couldn't live with. Were you in on it? Is that it? Nope. I was just there. Look, you can tell me. I won't use it. You can believe that, and you can believe me. So you better tell somebody. If I told you something you could win it with, you mean you'd pass? You'd blow it before you'd cop out? Is that what you're trying to tell me? My word has no price tag on it. Then what do you want to know for? It might help me. Make me believe in you. 
maybe even admire you. Or pity me. Well, that's right. At least I could plead for you then with a little more conviction, a little more heart and less brain. You know what I mean? I could make that jury start to feel. Start to feel instead of sitting there like a bunch of computers. I'd like to tell it. I'd like to tell it just like it was. Maybe I could forget it. Tell it to me. It was B.C. country. Or at least that was the word. We were on ambush duty one miserable, rotten night. But we got ambushed. Four of us got shot. The rest scattered. When morning came, Pete and I started heading back, trying to find our post. We spotted a VC running. I shot at him. Threw up his hands and stopped. There was a girl with him. She was 20 years old. 14, you, you, you can't tell. The man showed us an ID card that the Army passes out, but V.C. steal them, so we couldn't be sure. So we decided to take them back with us. Then all of a sudden, the man started screaming like a banshee and running off. Peter shot him down and chased after the girl. And he caught her. They fell. And Peter... He killed her? After he raped her. Mm hmm? Hey, man. You know, Pete didn't do that. That was somebody else. That was somebody different. That was somebody who'd spent too much time in a place that he just didn't understand. In a place where your friends were shot one day by somebody who the day before they'd given food to. Or killed by a landmine on a piece of dirt that you checked out that morning. And you said nothing? I said we'd killed two VCs. Maybe we did. I heard it, Jerry. All of it. I'm glad I did. Oh, he didn't know I was there, honey. All right, so you heard it. Are you going to repeat it? You know I won't. You want to tell that story in court? I won't. But yes, I'd like to. Peter Callender is dead, and nothing can hurt him now, not even the truth. I'd go to the gas chamber before I'd tell that in court. I loved Peter. I love his mom and dad. I won't tell it. All right. But tell me how he died. We shipped out right after that. Pete was changed like a guy I never knew. I'd catch him staring at me. Because I'd been there and seen it. I cut out, mostly for his own good. Went up to Canada. I wanted to be with the guys who hadn't bought it. That takes, uh, takes as much guts to say no as it does yes sometimes. How did Pete find you? Ran into me one day down on the strip. I bought him some booze, tried to get him to talk. It was no good. What happened that night? He showed up here, maybe a little high on something. We drank some beer and talked about nothing. And then he said... I had a dream. I went to visit the Chicana's mother, and I gave her a VC flag. He was a nice guy. Yeah. They all were nice guys. 
I should stay on with them. They're all dead, Pete. That's what I mean, man. It's like when you're dead, you're not you're not guilty of anything. Hey, come on, forget it. Just forget it. Nobody's guilty. Okay. Forget it. We'll go down to that place and we'll just forget it and wipe the slate clean. And we'll forget everything except me next year. Right on. I thought I'd better get him smashed and talk to him. Like you got me smashed to talk to you. So we had him town. We started acting really strange. That's I said, pull over, man, or I'm going to stick you right here. Now get out. Hey, Pete, what's wrong with you? You, man. You're going to cop out on me someday, aren't you? Hey, Pete, man. I knew it that no. time on the strip. I looked behind that hair and that beard, and I saw, saw you, man. I'm going to give you a chance to fight. Hey, Pete, I can't fight you. Look, man, I won't cop out on you. I'll never cop out on you. I'll keep it if you hold me to it. But why should you? It was self-defense. I can get you acquitted. If I told that on the witness stand, how Pete died, I'd have to tell why, wouldn't I? Yes. Do your best for me, Mr. Nichols. But you'll have to do it on your own. Not only flimsy, not only based on an identification by a man who admitted that all people, is all people like that, look alike to him. But, and this is the deepest flaw in the prosecution's case. No suggestion of motive. No hint of why Jerry Perdue, who grew up with Peter Callender and loved him like a brother, and loved his parents just like they were his own. No hint of why Jerry Perdue might have killed his best friend. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you search for an answer in this case, I, I beg you to keep these things in mind. And maybe you also might keep in mind the debt that we owe this boy. When his country asked him to serve in a tragic war on the other side of the earth, he went. He served his full time in those steaming, blood-drenched swamps and jungles. And he emerged with honor. He emerged with honor and a bronze star. So while you are considering whether the state has proved its case beyond a reasonable doubt, also, I want you to consider the debt, your debt, 
to this innocent young man, this distinguished, decorated soldier who stands here accused of murder. deadlock is uh, incapable of being resolved? Yes, Your Honor. After you returned us for another try at a decision, the split got bigger, if anything. We all sincerely believe the unanimous decision, one way or the other, is impossible. All right. Thank you. I'm now convinced that the jury cannot reach a verdict in the case that's before this court, and therefore declare a mistrial. The court's adjourned. What does that mean? Do I have to go through this again? You just, you two just stay cool here. I'll go over and check with the district attorney. It's up to him. Well, Jim, what now? Do you hold him for retrial or do you do the right thing and let him go? The right thing? That kid was identified from a lineup. And his victim didn't say, oh, he kills me. His victim said, he's going to kill me, just as the record shows. So the right thing would be for me to try him again. Ask me if I'm going to do the pragmatic thing, Walt. Glad to. Consider the question asked. No. I'm not going to try him again. Because if I did, you'd go into your act again. You'd make the jury feel like ungrateful, unpatriotic, and godless brutes just for even thinking about treating a Vietnam hero like the criminal that he is. And the state would be out another fortune for a hung jury. You know, Walt, I thought that you were a better man than this. Well, you're right about one thing, Jim. I'd do it again. All right. I'm going to dismiss all charges against him. He's a free man. And he's your problem, Walt. He's on your conscience. You know, there's an old saying. Oh, I'm sure that you have one. A burdened conscience will never need a hangman. So, Jim, pray for me. Will you? Well, you won't be tried again. The charges are dropped. No. Thank you. Hey. Let's go to my place, get out the guitars, and sing about something. Hey, what? A stash bag. Oh, wow. You really are a hairy Buddha. Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Way down yonder in the paw paw patch. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Come on, boys, let's go find her. Way down yonder in the paw paw patch. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Way down yonder in the paw paw patch.